We'll start with each to reach six. 12,396 participants. Teach to reach seven. We got to 13,676. And believe it or not, for this edition of Teach to Reach Eight, 9,335 English speakers, a grand total combined both languages of 16,835. And again, we say this every time, it's quite important. It is not about the connections you have with us, with me or Charlotte or the Geneva Learning Foundation. It is about the connections you have with each other. What you're seeing on the screen is a graph we show very often. It's social network analysis showing how you at Teach to Reach and the Movement for Immunization Agenda 2030 are connected to each other. So that as a preamble for this opening ceremony. And now over to you, Charlotte, um, to lead the uh, this um, opening ceremony by the women who deliver vaccines. Thank you, Reda. The Women Who Deliver Vaccines is a collective of 143 women from 38 countries that came together in uh, in 2021 to uh, see how they can support one another, support women from all health system levels to promote uh, 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 the immunization agenda. And today, to open uh, uh, this dish to reach, We'll, they will be talking about the work that they are doing to promote HPV vaccination. We know that uh, uh, every year, each year, there are 600,000 new cervical cancer cases that are registered, uh, 340,000 deaths. And uh, with the pandemic, uh, there was a black backsliding of vaccination coverage from 15% to 12%. So uh, today, uh, to, um, to, 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 to open uh, this ceremony, we have uh, uh, Perina Okecha that is joining us. I'm inviting her to unmute to talk to us about how uh, 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 she, she has made um, uh, HPV vaccination to work amongst young girls. So Penina, if you're able to unmute yourself, and please do start. I know it, uh, uh, your details are on the screen, but can you uh, start by introducing yourself and share your story? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Penina Okech, as uh, Charlotte has said. Uh, my story is uh, based on experience on uh, HPV vaccination uh, at district level in Kenya. So, Charlotte, can I go ahead? Yes, please go ahead, Penina. Yes, so um, how I made HPV vaccination work for the girls and women, um, I started by being one of the champions on talking about uh, the importance of receiving the HPV vaccine. And the messages were key to uh, specific points about the importance of the vaccine. I also participated in micro planning for the HPV vaccine needs uh, to enable us have enough supplies for the girls and also target and map out the girls who are in school and those who are not in school who are actually eligible for the vaccine. So I started by, uh, first of all, being part of the team that was sensitizing various groups, including the men, women, teachers, and youth about the vaccine. Um, there were leaders in each and every group that were recruited to support us and champion about uh, the acceptance of the vaccine. We shared a lot of key messages through flyers and IEC materials, which we ensured that through the health promotion officers, these uh, uh, IEC materials were placed strategically for the public to read. And we also held uh, radio talk shows, which uh, were on the benefits of the vaccines. So we also worked together with the teachers because most of the girls were eligible for the vaccine were actually, uh, most of them were in school, even though some of them were out of school. So the situation before that was that uh, there was a lot of resistance for the HPV vaccine because one, uh, there were rumors that it was uh, a family planning method targeted tar targeting the young girls. Uh, so even though uh, a few health workers and the teachers had been sensitized on it, prior to the launch of the vaccine, the uptake still remained very low. So uh, the strategy from the Ministry of Health had, was that the girls were supposed to visit the health facility to receive the vaccine, but it didn't take off as expected. So the, the numbers went low and uh, we had several vaccine doses, uh, which 
expired as the uh, health workers waited for the girls to come to the health facility. But uh, thanks to the strategies and the wake-up call from the Ministry of Health, uh, we started by uh, talking to the stakeholders and we were supported to do micro planning and still map out the girls. And a lot of outreaches were done. And during that same period, um, periodic intensification of routine immunization was conducted. And the age group for the girls who were supposed to receive the vaccine was expanded. And then during COVID vaccination, we also included them, uh, the girls. We did the, both uh, the vaccines at the same time and also included the immunization stamp at the entrance of the health facility so that if any girl was visiting a facility, then they would be screened for the vaccination status for the HPV vaccine. If they were not vaccinated, then at that point, they will be offered the vaccine. So um, together with the other stakeholders, including teachers and community leaders, uh, we, we came up together and ensured that we reach out to all the girls and it turned out well because now the, 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 all the girls were sensitized to uh, receive the vaccine. Um, we also ensured that the schools had an updated register of the girls who are due for each dose and worked together with the teachers, included the teachers in any planning meetings for the uh, vaccine uh, that was supposed to be administered to the girl, the girls. So um, in summary, the key, uh, what was key to HPV vaccine acceptance was that uh, initially the information had not reached the public. And so uh, we focused on giving key facts about HPV vaccine and the benefits of uh, the vaccine to the girls. Thank you and over. Thank you very much indeed, Charlotte. Um, I believe before we hear the next uh, experience shared, um, you, we have a guide on the side who has joined us um, looking to... Uh, yes, Reda, are you, are you speaking? Because I'm not able to hear. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now, Reda. All right. You see, everyone, really everyone has these uh, uh, these issues. So uh, we're, yes. So my question to you uh, was, what shall we, we so first of all, thank you, Penina Oketch, for this first experience shared. Uh, what shall we do next, uh, Charlotte? Yes, Reda, I would like to uh, warmly welcome Law Anais Zuta. That is our guide on the site today. And just to explain a little bit, what do we mean by guide on the site? To us, it's the opposite of a sage on the stage, which is uh, that expert that comes to give you a, a lecture or a PowerPoint presentation with all the technicalities and technical details <coughs> around uh, HPV, which is the case in point today. But instead, we have here a guide on the site Law and I that has accepted to come and listen to your experiences to learn from you and also give uh, uh, give you feedback and useful insight of what she is learning and hearing from your experience. So I would like to turn towards before we go to our next speaker. I'd like to turn towards Law and I uh, if you're able to unmute yourself, please. Will you start by introducing yourself and telling us what you think about uh, the story shared by uh, Penina Okech around uh, HPV vaccination in Kenya. Thanks so much, Charlotte, and uh, thank you for having me here today. So um, let me just give a quick introduction. My, my name is Loana Zoltek. I work in global vaccine delivery for the Clinton Health Access Initiative, or CHAI. I'm based out of Kigali, Rwanda. Uh, so I'm also going to be off video because my connection is not the most stable today. Uh, but at CHAI, we support about 15 countries with vaccine coverage improvement and equity program, as well as new vaccine introduction. And I lead our HPV work. Uh, so at the moment, supporting countries like Nigeria and Indonesia with planning the national introductions, previously smaller countries like Sierra Leone and Lesotho, as well as Ethiopia, and we have ongoing work in Kenya, Cameroon, Uganda as well to uh, improve coverage in this country. Um, so I really wanted to express my thanks for having me here today. Very much looking forward to hearing from the insights from all the colleagues on the call who work across many different countries and contexts and discussion coming out of it. Um, 
And thank you so much, Penina, for sharing your uh, your experiences and this inspiring story on boosting um, confidence in the HPV vaccine. I think we all know that HPV is one of the vaccines that require a lot of work on uh, tackling hesitancy and making sure that um, all stakeholders are comfortable with the vaccine for, for, to ensure that we have good uptake. And what I've taken away maybe from your story is the, the engagement you've done with not just the women and the girls, but all the, the other influences that lead to a decision on taking the HPV vaccine, so including men and teachers. I think in all countries we have found that teachers are such a crucial part of building confidence in the vaccine as a, as a trusted source of information. And I'm also, I was really interested to hear as well the flexibility approach that you adopted in making sure that girls were vaccinated in school, also during the COVID vaccination campaign, as well as um, when they showed up at health facilities, really making the most of every and each interaction that the girls have with the healthcare system. I think that's that flexibility of not considering just one service delivery strategy, but all the ones that could lead to um, vaccinating girls in HPV is very, very inspiring. Yeah, okay, thank you, you very Charlotte. much. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, 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 Laura. I would like to turn to our second woman who did the vaccine, uh, Fanny Ogu. Fanny, are you able to unmute yourself? Uh, to tell us about uh, the work you are doing uh, in terms of educating young girls and community around HPV vaccination. Uh, Fanny, I'm asking you to unmute. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Hello? Yeah, good afternoon, good afternoon everyone. Introduce yourself. Okay. Yeah, I'm Fanny Ogu. I'm a nurse epidemiologist, implementation researcher, and immunization professional. I retired from services of Federal Ministry of Health as an assistant director of nursing services. And um, I'm volunteering my services, um, independent immunization volunteer at the rural district of primary health care center um, in Delta State. Uh, and uh, I'm an alumnus of um, TGR. That's who I am. So coming to the HPV with this, with this intimidating statistics that I'm seeing on the, on, um, on the screen of 600,000 new cases every year. And Nigeria as a country, there is no endorsed HPV vaccine immunization program in Nigeria. The cost of available vaccines is so high that people cannot afford. And the low health insurance scheme is yet another challenge. So there is zero knowledge about HPV vaccine, abysmally low in Nigeria. So an occasion presented itself because as a, a volunteer, um, as an immunization volunteer in the district, I was working to address um, zero dose and undervaccinated children, um, engaging in, um, in uh, community risk and communication with stakeholders, um, rollout of new vaccines. So along the line, we decided to carry out um, a campaign on Menstrual, menstrual hygiene, menstrual hygiene and practices, knowledge and practices of menstrual uh, hygiene among secondary school uh, girls in a rural community in Delta State. Along the line, we decided to field in questions on HPV. And surprisingly, of over 120 students that we presented these questions to, Nobody knows anything about it. The few that had an idea because of the common words, the H and the V, were telling us that um, 
mistaking it for HIV and AIDS. So the outcome is that there is no knowledge about HPV vaccine in the rural communities. So what we now decided to do is to come together with this objective of providing HPV vaccination awareness campaign among adolescent girls in secondary school, in the, in the rural secondary school in Oluogo, then to initiate HPV screening for women between age 15 and 49 years of age. The idea of initiating this screening is that by the time some women undergo the screening um, exercise and some cases are identified, that will arouse the community and the dwellers to know that there is HPV cancer related cases among the rural dwellers. So um, what is here now, the strategy that we have put in place is community engagement with men and women leaders, religious leaders, and um, training of healthcare workers on interpersonal, interpersonal communication risk skills, so as to build capacity for effective service delivery, collaboration with collaboration and partnership with political leaders, philanthropists, so as to fund the provision of vaccines because the cost is, is not within uh, the reach of the ordinary person. Um, that is what we're trying to do. And we want to do this so as to we want to carry out this exercise on the, 34, on, the, on the 11th of October this year, 2023, ahead of, ahead of um, the introduction of the HPV vaccine into the Nigerian okay. system as announced by the WHO uh, representative that come November 2023, there will be introduction of HPV vaccine into our Thank system. You. Then Thank you very what much, Thank you so much, Swami, for sharing with us uh, all that which you're doing, your engagement in preparation for the introduction of the HPV vaccine in Nigeria. So before I turn to our guide on the side, I would like us to turn now, listen to a man, because uh, the women who deliver vaccine have always been supported by the men working in immunization. And uh, I would like to invite Bile Nestor, whether his story is among those uh, that are in the slide deck, to share with us his experience with uh, HPV vaccination at the district level in Cameroon. Over to you, uh, Nectar, and please do start by introducing yourself. Uh, thank you very much, Charlotte. Uh, hi, Reda, and uh, everyone on board. I am uh, Bilen Nestor Bintar. I am a medical doctor. Uh, I was uh, working as a district medical officer in, uh, in Cameroon, in one of the districts in the Northwest regions of, region of Cameroon. Yeah, uh, I really want to thank you for giving me this uh, honor and uh, pride of place to to contribute among women who deliver vaccines. You know, anything that has to be successful has to start with women. And uh, when we were growing up, we, we knew that nurses were only women until we got to a certain level. So I want to thank you very much for giving me this uh, opportunity to contribute, uh, especially when we are talking about the women uh, delivering vaccines. Yeah, uh, in Cameroon, before the introduction of uh, HPV vaccine, uh, about a month uh, prior to the introduction of the vaccine into routine immunization uh, program, uh, uh, there was a uh, a letter written by one of the top uh, profile um, uh, religious leader giving instructions that uh, the vaccine should not be administered in any health facility or school within uh, his jurisdiction. So uh, this uh, particular letter was uh, widely relayed by social media and uh, some uh, media houses. And uh, that uh, brought us a lot of problems. Uh, we had uh, difficulties. Uh, uh, convincing people to get the vaccine, although we understand that the minister had the uh, minister of health has some working sessions with the bishops and others, but uh, at the end, I'm not sure there was a formal letter that was written uh, to really uh, 
uh, stop the implementation of uh, the, the, the in official information that came before. Uh, where I worked, uh, the Catholic Church plays a very important role. Uh, majority, some of the health facilities, about a fifth of the health facilities uh, managed by Catholic, Catholic Church and uh, majority of the Christians or majority of the population are of the Catholic faith. So this letter from the high profile uh, leader from the church uh, brought a lot of resistance and uh, these particular health facilities, uh, we are very reluctant in engaging in HPV vaccination activities. So uh, although their position was not really clear, they didn't come up clearly to tell us that uh, this was the, the problem. Uh, so we are clearly not really ready to start uh, implementing uh, HPV vaccination. So I had a working station with them. I had advocacy meeting with them, but uh, some tried to change, but others were still reluctant. So I was trying to find out uh, if there was an official position uh, from the from the Catholic Church in general. And I feel uh, I came across a position paper that was written by uh, Catholic Medical Association is like a governing body that also looks into the ethical issues related to certain maybe vaccines and, uh, and, the, and the Catholic faith in general. And it was recommended that uh, the, 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 the decision to vaccinate the child, the girl child should be taken by the parents and not uh, the church. So uh, I used uh, this particular position letter to do my advocacy and also share the letter with uh, my colleagues and even uh, the regional uh, coordinator for EPI activity. So we have been exploiting the letter, try doing uh, advocacy. And uh, although we understand that the HPV coverage is still low, but it has been improving uh, when we came across, uh, as since we came across uh, that particular piece of information. So uh, I think I shared the, the link to the paper to okay. Geneva Learning Foundation. So that's the short story I have to share concerning HPV vaccination. Thank you very much, Shara. Thank you so much, uh, Bile Nestor, for sharing that story. Um, so uh, we are going to are going towards the end of uh, uh, this particular session on the women who deliver vaccines and HPV vaccination. But I would like to turn to our guide on the side once again, after listening to uh, these two different uh, experiences, uh, uh, what are your thoughts? What are your insights? And uh, what uh, maybe um, uh, uh, key takeaways uh, should uh, uh, participants go back with today after listening to this as far as SPV vaccination is concerned? Thanks, Charlotte, and thank you so much to um, the two presenters just now for very, very different contexts, but very interesting stories of HPV uh, information. I think the main key takeaways for me is that we're seeing very different uh, contexts between Cameroon and Nigeria, one where introduction happened, but unfortunately was low coverage, and Nigeria is coming up to its own introduction. I think there's a lot of learning that um, Nigeria can absolutely gain from some of those other experiences. Um, and I'm noting the, the importance of engaging not just teachers, but um, also religious leaders, of course, as well as professional bodies, such as medical associations, which uh, in other countries we found can also oppose or on the other side, really support the HPV vaccine and that can lead to, to better uptake. Um, I think what's very interesting and in, uh, what Fanny had shared is emphasizing this link between HPV and cervical cancer, which might sound obvious, but I think sometimes some of the information around HPV, because it can be linked to sexual and reproductive health or family planning, then people are a lot more hesitant. Whereas if you're able to re-emphasize the cervical cancer prevention narrative uh, is something that has been very powerful and based in Rwanda and every time there are cervical cancer prevention activities, the HPV vaccine is always mentioned and that really helps building confidence. And maybe the main key takeaways that I, I'm taking away from this conversation and I hope everybody else is, is the, the, the real impact that each of us can have if we see ourselves as HPV champions and think about how we can um, implement that, that vision of being a champion in our own specific context. Maybe I'm going to end there. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Law. And I see there's a comment in the chat from uh, Gibrila uh, 
by Dan Batimbo from uh, Sierra Leone who says HPV vaccination was the biggest success. As I hear stories from colleagues, I now see the extra intervention we did for our success. So Gribila, I see your mic is already open. Please, can you tell us a little bit more? What did you do in Sierra Leone to, uh, to uh, uh, attain 92% uh, coverage of uh, HPV uh, for X HPV vaccination? Over to you and please do start by introducing yourself. Good morning and thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody is hearing me. I am Jibwila Badimba Timbo, uh, a CHO in Sierra Leone. I'm a medical assistant, but uh, I'm attached to the EPI program national uh, as the M&E officer and the data management, uh, the head of the data. Um, there are a lot of things Sierra Leone did, uh, which I have observed is not mentioned here. Um, <clears throat> firstly, we involved in the micro planning, we involved everybody from the, the <clears throat> we started involving the farmers. These are uh, the like the kings of each of the chiefdoms because there are about 152 chiefdoms in the district. And these are, I mean, the local leaders in those communities in the micro planning process. Again, we involved the Ministry of Education at the highest level. We involved the, the, the first lady of the country, right, in the, in the, in the micro planning process. We involved teachers, right, the headmasters at of second of all of all schools, right, and then in the micro planning, we even involved the statistics Sierra Leone, right. That is the the, the 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 people that are responsible to give us data about the population we are going to target, right. So it was from the onset at the micro planning level we involved every stakeholder so that we can have a success. And what was very, very clear, uh, that came out very clear, was the involvement of the class masters in hiving out the age that was necessary and then pre preparing those students at class level and then providing this data for us to the, be prior to the intervention, right? And then <clears throat> I, after all the micro planning and after all the work we have done, I had the opportunity now to supervise a specific district, and that was Koinadugo district, right? And then there I saw the glaringly clear, the, 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 I saw glaringly the successes we did in terms of allowing the big community stakeholders to be part of our micro planning, particularly education and the paramount chiefs and other stakeholders, right? Well, I, I, I involved myself in Koinadugo. Um, uh, a, a, a Muslim dominated community, right? And that has um, communities that come from neighboring Guinea that are sometimes resistant to immunization. So um, <clears throat> the district director of education was part of our, 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 our intervention during that time. And there were schools after some time who were not so sure for us to do the immunization session. But fortunately for us, the district director had a letter from the Ministry of uh, Education, from the directly from the Ministry of Education, which we were, we had copies, which we shared to all the schools at that time, and we used him in our radio panel discussions every evening to discuss the issue. There were re the resistance, the little, little bit of resistance we are getting at that time were easily resolved, and he was very very active in going down to schools together with us in vehicles and community. And the, the beautiful thing about CLU is we did the intervention with COVID-19 vaccine. When we did the HPV intervention, the COVID vaccination also shut up, you know, because there were children in the school who haven't taken the vaccination at that time, right? who were not taking COVID and who were so uh, HPV as an opportunity, right? They too were vaccinated equally. And um, <clears throat> one case stood out clearly, one secondary school stood out clearly, it was a mission school um, that had wanted to, uh, that did not want to take the vaccine, right? Well, we what we did was with the social mobilization as I me from the national level, worked to the social mobilization officer, we went to the director of, uh, of, of of, of education of the district, and then we engaged him. We went to the school collectively. He, of course, with already ha having already uh, called him in Freetown, 
in the micro planning process, having already taken in, not having adequate knowledge of what to say, we allowed him to address his, his, the schools. And then everything went on smoothly, right? There were no refusals again. And then every, in fact, there were more people coming for the vaccines that we, were, we weren't even thinking we would get such coverage, right? Because there were groups that were coming whose age difference, because our target group was, was, was just one cohort, right? And there are other people begging now that why have we left them out? And why are we not covering those groups that are above the age groups we have? But we told them, you know, the vaccines were not adequate at that time. And therefore, we, 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 that way we tailored the vaccine to a specific age group so that uh, the interventions could, I mean, we could not miss, uh, uh, we could not, I would not want to take a big number of children and then the vaccines got shocked. So we targeted a special, a special group of children, age group, and then gave the vaccination. So the, problem, the big problem we have in Sierra Leone now is a lot of people want the vaccines now, particularly the age between 11 to 14 years, but the vaccines are not adequate for them. And everybody now wants the HPV vaccine, but it's no longer, it's not, it's the, we do not have adequate vaccines for the vaccination. Um, unlike other countries generally, Sierra Leone is so much receptive about vaccination, that's for sure, right? Um, there are two, it is true that uh, there are a few people who come from the neighboring countries, particularly Guinea Conakry, right, who generally, uh, because of their religious background and uh, some ethnicities, um, who usually refuse. But we were able to convince them, they were part of the vaccination session, we use their community leaders in this intervention. And, and, and to us, the success was the Ministry of Health and Sanitation. It was so, for the Ministry of Health and Sanitation, was the involvement of the schools from the, and okay. the Paramount Chiefs. Thank, okay, you. thank you <clears throat> very much indeed, Jibrila Badaimba Timbo from Sierra Leone. There's a lot there. I invite you to reflect on this as we um, thank the uh, Women Who Deliver Vaccines Collective for speaking out about HPV, 600,000 new cervical cancer cases each year, 340,000 deaths each year. And think about, in your country, are people scared of cancer? If so, um, this is a vaccine that can save them, prevent them from catching one or developing one kind of uh, cancer uh, and one that may be a significant uh, cause of mortality and morbidity in your country.